from ABC News Radio, KMET 1490 in Southern California. This is Biz Ninja Entrepreneur Radio with your host, Tyler Jorgensen. I want to welcome everybody out to Biz Ninja Entrepreneur Radio here on ABC News Radio and broadcasting all around the world at bizninja.com. I want to welcome back to the show. This is really fun. The first of our follow-up series. Uh, welcome back to the show, Stephen Key. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. Stephen, so you and I first talked on May 18th, 2011. I, I looked up my notes. Um, and uh, and you, were, you came on my show when I was back on an NBC channel. And we had an awesome conversation about uh, licensing and inventing and um, brought up one of uh, somebody, one of somebody you had mentored, Tim Ferriss. We talked about some cool stuff. So we're going to do a little bit of going back to the beginning with your story. But what's happened with you since 2011? Jeez, 2011. It's been that long? Uh, <laughs> quite a bit. Um, I live up in Lake Tahoe. I'm not quite sure I was up in Lake Tahoe. I live up in Lake Tahoe. Yeah, I don't think you were. That's awesome. No, and it's a, it's a beautiful place. So I'm very happy about that. And I'm actually on the Nevada side which I'm 13 miles from paying state tax in California. So that's a reason to celebrate right there. That is. <laughs> um, number two, I guess, um, we're still working on getting the message out uh, of showing entrepreneurs how they can launch ideas without starting a business, without spending a lot of money, without filing patents, without doing all the crazy stuff. And I do that through books right one simple idea we probably talked a little bit about that I we did think. it's okay. one of my favorite books i was actually going to hold it up but i i have just recently lent it out to a friend so okay. uh for those of you that are new to who stephen key is uh he's the author of a book called one simple idea which um is the concept of you, you your idea you can license it out to someone and make a ton of money without what stephen just said um starting a business and spending tons of money protecting the IP. But that's probably everyone's biggest concern. They're like, I have this great idea, but someone's going to steal it from me. Well, everybody feels that way, but it's just not true. Okay. Yeah. And um, you hear these stories, but they're just not true. Companies don't want to steal ideas. Company wants, companies want you to show them great ideas. They want to pay you royalties for your ideas. And that's just fact. And I get to see licensing agreements every single week that get signed. And guess what? No one has a patent. So that just blows everybody's mind because you hear, you even hear it on Shark Tank. Well, you got to have a patent. Yeah. Shark Tank okay. has almost made it even worse, right? They've made it even a, a bigger thing. And I think it's, personally, I think it's because the, the patent helps protect that investor guy, right? <laughs> Not really the business guy. The business owner could go to someone and do the licensing agreement, but the investor guy wants to be protected at a different well, level. You're never really protected. Right. Okay. So it's kind of foolish. I mean, I give this example, look at Apple. They're the biggest company on the planet. They've had thousands of patents, hundreds of patent attorneys, and they cannot protect their technology. Right. Okay. So what are we talking about? Who actually wants to go to court? No one wants to go to court. It's not about protection. It's about speed. That's what it's about today. And, and if, if you're not, if you don't understand licensing, you're, you're really hurting yourself because licensing allows you to find that perfect partner that has shelf space, that has manufacturing, has relationships, they have everything in place. So when you show them an idea, they're going to take it, they're going to rent it from you, pay your royalty, and put it on the shelf as fast as they can. So they make money and you make money. Because guess what? If it's successful, you will have copycats. And I always tell everybody, congratulations. Yeah, because absolutely. They don't copy. they don't copy things that don't sell. One of the, the most interesting copies uh, that I saw recently was these guys that did the Kickstarter for this little uh, fidget cube. And they took so they had a, they wanted to raise like $5,000 and they raised like $500,000, some stupid amount, way more than they expected. Yeah. But then they were really, really slow <laughs> to market. So slow that before they'd even shipped their first unit, some 
young 22 year old out of New York had already shipped thousands and he had, you know, so, and now there's, and I, I feel like that was the whole beginner of the fidget spinner movement and things. And so, um, speed is my point in that, right. Is that really it, any entrepreneur who's not moving quickly on an idea, um, is, is missing the boat and they need to pair up with someone who can help them move fast. Right. Yeah. I, I had the pleasure of interviewing the co-founder of Indiegogo Mm -hmm. and I was very curious about how they perceive, well, let's put it this way. My question for him was, what can we do to protect ourselves on your site? Because you cannot. And if you're successful, I can guarantee you China's watching. All right, oh, so, yeah. what do you, so what do you do? His argument, which is a very fair argument, he said, look, we think the risks, the, the benefits outweigh the risks. I wonder if you ask the person with the fidget cube, they feel the same way. He, so there was an interview that asked him that, and he did. He felt, he said, um, their project still was successful. Their brand was still successful. Okay. He, he never anticipated owning 100% <laughs> of a market. In fact, the market is way bigger than he ever calculated. Okay. So luckily he had the maturity to recognize that he just went from having, let's say 100% of a little tiny pot pie to 20% of like a buffet he, of desserts. <laughs> that's okay. Now, yeah. he's, you know, that's really interesting. Um, and I'm glad he has that attitude. Yeah. I don't know if everybody has that attitude. They but don't. The, <laughs> no, they, they don't. But the, the, the point is, is speed. So mm-hmm. how do you manage all industries or how do you just manage launching a product, getting it out there, for, get it out there first. Right. And then um, hope it's a success. Yeah. So tagging back to some of the some of the who is Stephen Key and what's your background, um, the things that I remember is the one that's prominently right behind you in the video here uh, is Teddy Ruxpin, right? That was a big icon of my childhood that I remember, <laughs> right? And uh, and so help us understand just a little bit of your history and inventing and patent or licensing right. and that kind of stuff. <laughs> Well, I didn't start out, I'm not a very creative person. I didn't start out being an entrepreneur. I just didn't think anybody would hire me, so I created my own job. And that was just coming up and making little things and selling them at street corners and county fairs. And I was fascinated with that transaction of how to create something that someone wants. I was fascinated by it. And through that whole journey, um, about seven years later, after selling things on street corners and learning a lot about people and coming up with ideas quick, um, I found, um, I read this article about this startup company called Worlds of Wonder. And it, they had this ugly teddy bear. In fact, I think I've got the ugly one over there. See the ugly <laughs> <Yeah>. one? Okay. <laughs> and it, they, they had a prototype and they showed it in the, in the picture in the newspaper. And it was Sunday. It was on the couch. And. I thought, they need me. I'm a plush designer. I, I think I had designed like two things. I went in there and kind of stretched the truth. And I went in there and knocked on the door Monday. And sure enough, they, they liked my enthusiasm. Okay. And they hired me. And that journey led me to be manager of design for Worlds of Wonder. Wow. And I got shipped off and to help Teddy Ruxman be manufactured and laser tag and all those great things that we did in the late 80s. Um, fantastic ride. Learned a ton about the toy industry. In fact, I just went back to Toy Fair because they're relaunching Teddy 30 years later. Oh, I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. So it was fun because <laughs> I had the prototype. I, mm-hmm. In fact, the prototype I have that's up on the shelf um, is prototype number 28. So oh, cool. I, I really it's really dates me right but but that's how it all started and then from worlds of wonder i learned a lot about the toy industry a lot about manufacturing and i i came away saying like i i want to do this i want to be the guy i want to be the guy like ken force i want to be the inventor that's collecting royalties because when i was over in hong kong china for months and months the inventor was making millions right and I was doing part of the work, not all the work, part of the work. And, and sure. I was fascinated by it. How, how did he license that? And so I, I went home and quit Worlds of Wonder and started my own company. Yeah. 
And there we are. And so, um, and you've done a lot of licensing since then. Um, now, one of the things I think is interesting is most entrepreneurs think, okay, I have an idea. My next step is to go find a manufacturer. And I think that's, a, I make, I still make that same mistake because it's linear, right? But really the next step is have an idea, find someone who can move the inventory, find someone who has an audience or who has the shelf space or who has the traffic, right? And that's who, then that's the right next partner because yeah, is that I, right? Or what, 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 yeah, what do you think? Well, I think if you want to venture a, a product, you still need partners, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, licensing is just finding a partner that has everything you, you need to do. <laughs> so imagine it's just a smart way of finding the right partner. That's all it is. And, and you're going to collect a royalty and they're going to do all the heavy lifting. I love that. And they're going to bring it to market really, really fast. So, so I, I absolutely uh, love that concept. And I think more creative entrepreneurs or people or just random people with an idea need to know how to do that. Now, obviously they, they need to go get your book. One simple idea. Um, where else do they learn about this? Okay. What, how do they know what the next step is? Um, McGraw Hill contacted me in 2011 and, and knew we were teaching this method and and my students were very successful with these 10 steps and they said steve would you put the 10 steps in a 13 dollar book i thought you gotta be crazy why would i give it all away for 13 dollars right um i called tim ferris at the time and said tim what should i do he says give it all away crazy thing and i shared that with everybody and i thought tim ferris he's a nut what, what do you mean give it all away but he was right. Um, Seth Godin told me the same thing. Give it all away. If you're really an expert, give it away. People will follow you. So I put everything in the book. I gave it away. For, I gave away my course where it's, I sell for thousands of dollars. Right. I give it away for 13 bucks. And what's really great about it, people have licensed ideas just by reading the book. So the, the book is your foundation. Ten steps, easy to do. Number two, I have a channel called InventRight TV which I do weekly videos, my coaches, because I have coaches teaching too, um, that were students that have licensed ideas, they're coaches now, and they give it away too. So we give it away week after week after week. Um, and that's, you know, I write articles for Inc. Inc.com, entrepreneur.com. I have the largest library in the world on licensing that's absolutely free on my website, inventright.com. So all those things are free. That's a lot I, of free. That's a I lot like to of do stuff. it. I like to yeah. do free. I like to do yeah. free. <laughs> so but what happens is, and then some people, they do jump in, they get involved, and then maybe, maybe they sign up. Because I have a course too. I said, look, if you want extra help, if you want me to hold your hand, if you want our coaches to guide you, help you with negotiations, we do that too. Do you need us? I don't think so. Um, we're here if you do. Um, we have students in 40 countries that need us. I like to think we do an excellent job. Um, but I see a lot of people licensed without us. Sure. You know, they, so I, 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 I'm pretty, I, I'm the worst salesperson ever about our company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they say, don't ever have Steve on because right. I like to give it away. <laughs> Well, but you know what is, uh, it's because you know that if someone can do it on their own, they should, but if someone is hitting a roadblock that you're there to help them overcome that roadblock. And so, um, I think that's the best type of salesperson, right? Is if you can do it on your own, you should, but if you need some help, we're here. Yeah. And, and you know that's what else, great. You know what else happens? Um, big picture. If someone reads a book, my book, license their idea, we all win. Okay. So right. if someone writes, reads, a, you know, watches a YouTube video or whatever, if they, they've taken my content, they've licensed an idea, I, we all win. So I, I like that. And I think um, because of that, we have a, a fairly, I guess we've become a little popular over the years. So it's Yeah, crazy. you guys have definitely grown even just since uh, our, first, our first conversation. What, um, I'm, I think a lot of people will really resonate well with success stories, right? Like, okay. you know, so maybe a, a couple more of yours or a couple of your students, give us some examples of how someone can take one simple idea, license it, partner with okay. somebody. And what kind of a, like, what kind of an opportunity is it really? 
You know, are they going to make a thousand bucks? You know, that um, kind of stuff. Well, sometimes you don't make any money at all. So let's, sure. Okay. Let's first of all say um, this is not the lottery. Okay. So let's let's make that clear. Um, you can do this. You don't have to quit your day job. Uh, some people have made millions. Some people make hundreds of thousands. Some people make ten thousand. Some people don't make any money at all. So I see all of it. Um, I have a technology that I've licensed for over 20 years that made millions for me. So I guess I have the luxury to give it away and live up in Lake Tahoe. So that, I, I, have a, I look at it differently. Um, I'm very fortunate I can do that. Okay. I, I can show you a product um, on the shelf. Um, it's one of my favorites. Um, it's called Zip It. And Zip It is just a piece of plastic about a foot and a half long. And it has barbs on it. And if you've got girls in your house, you know that the sink gets plugged. And I usually take a coat hanger and try to get it out, but that doesn't work. But this little thing, this, this $2.99 piece of plastic, you stick it in there, you twist it, and you pull out all this hair. He didn't reinvent the wheel. Right. Okay. That product creates millions of dollars for the, that individual. And that's so, been selling for 12 years. Yeah. I, I know that product. I've seen it on, on shelves and I, you know, a couple of bucks, right? It's not expensive. So no. to a lot of us that don't understand sales velocity and just the, how much the U S consumers spend, <laughs> it doesn't seem like there's an opportunity there, but yeah. that product, even if he's making small amount, you know, just some dimes or some pennies on <laughs> yes, it, yes. they've moved, you're saying they've moved tens of millions of units at, every at year, that. every year wow. for 12 years and still selling. So it does add up. And I tell everybody do the math, but no. the problem is they don't know the variables. So it's hard for them to do the math, right? Oh, they don't no, know no. what consumers are, what, what, how much, what kind of things, how much is selling. Oh no, 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 no. You can figure that out. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. There's always a high medium and low. Sure. Okay. Um, what you do, is imagine your product is in, let's say, Walmart. Okay. How many Walmarts are there? So many thousands. Let's say 3,000. Okay. Your product, if you, for you to stay on the shelf of Walmart, you need to sell one a week. If you're not selling one a week, you're going to get kicked to the curb. Do the math. See what I'm saying? One a week. Right, you can do the math. You can say, well, this is how many I'm going to sell. My royalty is going to come off the wholesale price. And so now, okay, now I'm in Target. I'm in Walgreens. I'm in Home Depot. Start adding up all the places where you're at. So I'm in 50,000 stores and I'm selling one a week. I'm selling 50,000 units a week. Do the math. See, that's yeah. how it works. So there, there's no mystery to any of it. And everybody thinks there is, but there really isn't. Now, you talked about a fidget, the fidget cube. That's a fad. Oh, sure. Okay. So I like to tell everybody, if you get a fad, congratulations. That's a, <laughs> you'll be chasing that forever. Um, but that's not the way to work it. You work it with a lot of ideas, submitting to a lot of companies, building relationships with those companies. So they tell you what you're looking for and just keep on feeding them ideas. I have students that have licensed 40 ideas. And they're collecting royalties off 40 SKUs. Adds up. Absolutely. So if you're looking at this million dollar windfall, am I going to tell you, yes, it's a guarantee? Absolutely not. Have I seen it happen? Yes, I have many times. So you got to play the numbers. That's like in any business. I don't care if sure. you're venturing or licensing. Same thing. Yeah. So in your, in your world, it's not really... I mean, yes, there's the people that maybe they hit one great product and that was their only idea, but the real opportunity is in being able to continually be creative, coming up with new ideas, handing them over to someone who has the resources to do the rest of the work and then looking for more ideas and coming up with, so it's kind of like one simple idea over and over. Yeah, it is. And, but <laughs> yes, it, thank you. Thank you. But one thing you have to realize, you, you do have to do some work. I mean, it sounds too easy. Of course. So, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So... I don't want everybody to think it's, it's easy, but there's a 12 year old young man that's doing it right now. So I wanted to say even a 12 year old can do it because that's the way you, anybody can. But, yeah. look at it, but look at it this way. Um, if you're really creative and you've got 300 ideas, you're never going to do 300 companies. No. 
okay? How many companies you think in your best day can you run in your whole career? All right, not that yeah. many, okay. Yeah, one so, to two, really, uh, to do a good job if you're doing okay. it right. All right, this allows you to be as creative as, as you want, live anywhere you want to, have companies working for you, play the multiplying effect, because I'm not a gambler. Yeah. That's that why I had, to, I had to figure this out. I wanted to make a lot of money, you know, I wanted to not, I guess I do work hard, but I, I, didn't, want to, I didn't want to take the risk. But there's a difference of being able to work hard because it's a choice and because you are, you're passionate and enjoying what you're doing and working hard because you're chasing something. And I think that's the freedom that you've created for yourself is you have, because of these agreements and these things that you've done, you have the freedom to, to work hard on the things you want to work on. Um, is that right? Or yeah, I, hopefully. I think, <laughs> no, well, you know, you kind of wonder at times what you're yeah. chasing. I, I think that most entrepreneurs want freedom. Yep. Okay. And to me, freedom was everything. Right. So I want to work as much as I, how much it takes to get the freedom I want. So life is very, very short. And my father told me, look, if you've, if you've got a job, look at your paycheck, figure out how much, what the type of raise you're going to get every year and count up your paychecks to your last one. If you're truly happy with that number, fantastic. If you're not, you better find another something else. So he, um, your, your father taught you right away to start understanding the math, right? Yeah. And understanding the multiplying effect and seeing, and that's smart because so many people don't even think about it and years and years will flash by in front of them. And all of a sudden, you know, they never even considered if that's actually the journey they wanted to be on. Um, and I think that what you just identified is the, is one of the major things that separates the entrepreneur from the employee is that they're conscious yeah. of that difference. Yeah. And I think they, they realize too that I'm going to work harder for it, for the freedom. And I don't mind putting 60 hours in or even more, but if I really like it, it's not work. That's but right. More than anything else, entrepreneurs don't want to work for anybody. All right. I don't know what it is about that, <laughs> but. Well, you said it, it's about freedom and it's about being able to pursue the things you want to work. And they, they always, there's that saying, Entrepreneurs are the only people that will work uh, 60 to 80 hours a week for themselves to avoid working 40 hours a week for someone else. Um, <laughs> but it's also because, you know, we take that risk of the, the upside being much higher. Yes. And I always, I also say like entrepreneurs wake up every day unemployed because, you know, yeah. it, now it's a little bit different if you've been smart, like you have, where you have licensing and royalty <laughs> agreements, but still you got to no, be pursuing, you got to be, you know, building. No, my wife said to me, and because she's had the traditional job, or was vice president of marketing for Gallo Winery, he collected all the paychecks, big paychecks, and she says, I've had more jobs than you have. And I said, no, you haven't. He says, well, you never worked for anybody. I said, every time I got paid, I, that was a job. True. So, yeah, so I, I think um, I really appreciate waking up every morning deciding what I want to do. That's a more positive way to say what, <laughs> say what I was saying. Yeah, you wake up and you get a, you're the master of your fate. Yes. Any, anything. If I want to go out and mow the lawn or go out for a walk or water the plants or guess what? I'm really excited. I'm going to work s Sunday night because I want to get ahead for Monday morning. That's what we do. Right? We love it. Absolutely. Yeah. What is... Uh, What's your number one piece of advice to someone who's just kind of making that mental transition from, uh, you know, maybe being trapped in their job to starting to want to think about doing something for themselves? Um, I think you, I think education is really important and I think you can get it. And I think you don't have to even pay for it. I think it's everywhere on the internet. Um, so step one is subscribe to invent right TV. Yeah. On I, YouTube. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then suck all the information you can from that channel. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> whoever's giving it away from free, this guy, gray hair, yeah. suck all the information away. That's so true. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know, I, we talked when we first talked, I was going through uh, an MBA program out at USC and I went back kind of for my own reasons, but I, I was the first to tell people that, hey, you don't need to go to a fancy school to get the information yeah. from an MBA, right? Like this information exists. There's guys like Steven on the internet that want to share this stuff with you. It's all there. You can learn way more about the things you want to learn by just going and getting this 
all of this free information that is amazingly available to us. Um, and that's, you know, if you know what you want to do, that's a great path to just start getting that education and, and, and learning what the opportunities are. You know what else I would say? Um, find something you really you like. Find something that just gets you excited and find a way to participate somehow, right? And start out small and um, find people that are talking about it. Find people that are loving it too. And I think that's really smart because you kind of get your little toe in there at first. Um, I also believe if you're really young and starting out, jump on a, a startup company. You'll learn more. Raise your hand for everything they need someone to do. Work your crazy hours. Don't sleep on Saturdays and Sundays. You will learn so much so quick, and there'll, there'll all be mistakes that you'll learn from. So when you want to leave and start your own company, you won't make them. <laughs> that makes sense. I like that. That is very true. Um, so Stephen, you're, you're continuing to do well. You're all over the, the country speaking and sharing your, your ideas. Um, and you said something that was really important to me that all of this work, all of this hustle is about creating freedom. I asked you before, um, and I ask everyone, what is the one big thing on your personal bucket list that you want to accomplish in the next 12 months? Um, I know you just got back from a big trip, so there, there maybe there's another one coming. <laughs> yeah, there always is. I, 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 I have a few big trips every year. I take about 30 days off and have places I want to do. So, but that isn't, those are pretty much just on the list to do. I, I don't have to work too hard. I've, I've, I've worked hard to get to make those trips possible. I want to start um, speaking more internationally uh, on this topic. And I'm speaking at the Newcastle uh, University in Australia in August. Um, I do a lot of speaking in Northern Ireland. The government brings me out there. I want to reach out to, to a larger audience to spread the word. And, Very cool. Uh, and that's kind of exciting for me because I, I was on a talk with someone just this week. A big organization, they've been around since 1968 and they help people with everything about you know, running a business. And I said, well, you know, you know, you can start a business and license ideas without patents. And they said, we've never heard of this. So that's a great opportunity to get in there and kind of um, share, plant seeds everywhere. That's cool. Yeah. Well, I, it's, uh, it's been fun staying connected with you over the past few years. Um, and, uh, and love seeing that, you know, you're the number of people that I see applying what you're teaching and their success stories happening and the things, it, it's really cool to see that impact and those ripples that you're sending out there into the entrepreneurial world. No, it, it's, um, when someone succeeds, we all do. And so if I can help with that journey, I, I love that. When I can see someone making it or, or, or following in their dreams, uh, I get goosebumps, it's a great thing. That's great. Well, I hope uh, all of our listeners are chasing, are pursuing their dreams. And if you want to learn more about Stephen Key, uh, you can go, you can find him pretty much all over the internet. Check out InventRight <laughs> TV. Uh, and definitely the a great place to start. I highly recommend the book, One Simple Idea. Um, still, still good. Even uh, how many years later is it now? I think we're going on seven years, although we did it updated and expanded. Oh, great. Yeah, we had to change it. Things change so quick. Absolutely. I'm going to have to order my update. It's great. I'll send, you, I'll send you one. How's that? Oh, I love it. Even better. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, thank you for tuning in to Biz Ninja Radio uh, with your host, Tyler Jorgensen, and with Stephen Key. Um, check us out on YouTube, on AM, on iTunes, wherever where you are. Now go out and do something. Thank you for listening to Biz Ninja Entrepreneur Radio with Tyler Jorgensen. Please make sure to subscribe so you're first to hear new interviews and episodes. If you found this podcast to be valuable, please share it with a friend. Don't forget to visit our online dojo at bizninja.com to claim your reward for listening to the show.